Welcome back. This is day four of my Halloween week review. I'm doing a book every single day leading up to Halloween. Seventh day being Halloween. The seventh book will be The Shining. It'd be my first time reading Stephen King. This book that I'm reviewing today is a non-fiction and it's called Killing the Witches. I flew through this book. It's a non-fiction and it is about the Salem witch trials. So you go into it learning about the Salem witch trials, but then it just has a whole bunch of other information on history that I never expected. It's just like they did this really well. I came into this getting what I wanted and then they followed it up with a whole bunch of extra information that I didn't ask for, but I needed, I didn't know I needed, and I'm really happy that I got it. This book is part of a series. I want to say this first books. I might be wrong in that. I'll write it up on the screen if I'm wrong. These two authors, one of them is a journalist actually, if you don't know over here in America, I don't know in the UK or anywhere else if you'd known, but I never knew that he wrote books. I was quite surprised. I was like, Bill O'Reilly? Is that like Bill O'Reilly the journalist? That's tomorrow and that is it for us today and we will leave you with a... I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! And thing sucks! Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. It starts off with the Mayflower leaving the UK and coming over and the settlers coming over to America for the first time in Massachusetts. And it actually goes into a little bit of the information of what they experienced on the Mayflower. It's just obviously brutal. They get to America and it's just, it's the journey of starting off this new life and getting rooted. And then obviously the whole thing that, that you know, the Native Americans in this book aren't, it's, that's a separate for a story for another day almost it seems. He's, he hasn't gone off on a tangent and put too much all together. They managed to cover so much information in a way that it doesn't feel like a mess. It's in a in a kind of a linear fashion. And what I mean by that is even in each chapter, it gives you kind of like a date and time when they started their journey and then it, like each, as it goes along, what's happening. A lot of people have heard about the witch trials, but there's definitely some confusion. I've heard I'm not the only one that's experienced this confusion, but apparently there are still people that think witches were burnt at the state in Massachusetts, when actually the witch trials of the UK, they were burnt at the state. In Salem, Massachusetts, they were hung. I don't know why I felt the need to say that. I guess I was just clearing up something that is probably like a misconception. I don't know. But anyway, it's all just terrible because these people weren't witches at all. I think they were just regular people. There's a lot of corruption involved. It really makes you think, wow, what people do, not only out of fear, I mean, out of desperation, the things that people, the levels people would stoop to. And I don't think even things have changed. I think we're just in a different dimension of what that means now to what you will do if you're fearful. You might not send someone to their death, or maybe they would, you know, it's just, it's thought provoking. What I like about this book is it's written in a real true journalistic way, in my opinion. There's no conjecture, it really is just laying out the information. There's citations at the bottom of each page and actual photographs of the documents from that time because all of this was documented. They've just taken the information and they've laid it out into this format of the book. And so it's really refreshing just to read a book on something that's historically accurate, I guess, based on documentation without any opinions. And so it's just refreshing to read, I mean, what has happened without having to have anybody's voice in your head. It's fascinating in all these different sectors of religion. All these people have come from the old world for freedom, freedom from taxes, freedom so they can express themselves in the way that they choose in this new world. But the irony is, it seems they run into the same problems by their own accord, the problems that they were running away from they create in a different in a different place. It's such a fascinating look at human psychology. This one example of, of a period in time and how people behaved and how they've evolved. Because what happens after the, the witch trials, the witch trials set a precedent and a ripple effect in time. And I love that. He really, you can tell they're thinking this when they wrote this book. They really deliberately wrote certain events in history chronologically to show you as crappy as this situation was, this whole 
thing, constitution, might not have come into being without this situation that occurred prior. What happened to these people was just unforgivable because it seems that the lack of courage was high. Very few people had the the gumption to stand up and say, um, and, and does anybody else think there's anything wrong with this situation? Like, are we just gonna hang these people because there's these kids saying like, oh, I still their spectre, they came after me. Yeah, because the thing is, these children's parents wanted the death, there's so much corruption. They wanted land, they wanted property, they, they, they wanted this person gone because they're a threat. And so it's just like, if, and then these children were acting up and people believed them. And then another thing is that people believed, didn't always believe them, but they wanted to believe them because they didn't want to be accused themselves. So they just kept, kept quiet. No one's standing up and saying, this is messed up. And it, eventually that happens obviously, but it takes a, a long time. And there's a lot of people that get killed. It, it crosses over into young Benjamin Franklin and kind of just a little nugget of what he's doing over here while well, this is happening here. He's developing and growing into this young boy who's involved in, interested in these different studies. He does that because it leads the way in how he's going to have such an impact on the change of times. And it's really nice how it leads into it because it's obviously there's different storylines that are kind of connecting together, but it's not messy and it's not confusing. Like I said, it's very linear. So it's really enjoyable to read. You just want to continue on to see where it goes. I mean, to the point where it gets to talking about the Exorcist film. The, the film The Exorcist, it was written first as a book and then it was developed into a film. You think, okay, why are you going into this? We're, we're reading about the witch trials. All of these situations have had a ripple effect leading on to these things later on. So The Exorcist film, and that's what's so fascinating. It makes you think about everything like that, right? This one action creates a reaction. So it's a ripple effect in time. This one thing that could be really, really terrible can end up having a runoff effect that could be really positive that would actually change everything for a better for the better good that might not have happened otherwise it's, it confuses it's complicated right how far do you really want to go with thinking about that because i'm not saying that that thing was worth happening for this thing to happen it's not but it is interesting to see that that has happened this is a random thought but thinking about the mayflower crossing the ocean i've crossed the atlantic twice on boat and it takes three weeks to cross well, you can do it in two weeks. There was one time it took me three weeks and there was another time it took two weeks. It's arduous even in a modern environment where everything, your your immediate needs are met and you're comfortable. But to think about actually being at sea for three months on a ship that is gross, smelly, can't get fresh air, they're under the, the boards for the longest time and amongst their all grossness, they have hardly any food. Honestly, I don't know anyone that's been at sea for a long time, you can really just think oh my gosh how did you do it being british british american you can say right i never don't i don't remember actually learning about the witch trials or really american history at school but to be honest i don't think i even remember any history at school i did not like history i tuned out i don't remember anything from that lesson i don't think i was even in my body i might have just left completely. I've learned a lot about American history. At this point, I might actually know a little bit more than I do about British history, which is quite funny. I, ne I always knew pieces of information, bits and pieces of the settlers coming over here and the revolutionary war between the British and the Americans. Just bits and pieces, but not the actual order of how things evolved or the little human actions, the simple human actions that partook for somebody to react a certain way that could have changed everything. Like things that you just don't imagine, silly things that people would fight about now, but back then, that was a trigger to be, okay, we're, we're going into this, this is war. Because things were already tense. I mean, tension in this book from those times, because things were difficult. There's all these different religions, these sectors of religions, Puritans, Catholicism, Anglicans, and there's, they're all just disagreeing on how to worship God. Now, the Puritans are the, the religion where the witch trials occurred, and they're extremely strict. They had women head to toe covered, even in summertime, they're just extremely strict people. Any scream of somebody acting different, oh they're a witch. That's how extreme it was. But all of these actions later on helped to get to that point where the constitution, they were fighting for freedom of religion, freedom of speech, these things that happened later on. Whew.
the the British and the Americans were fully connected for the longest time. The Crown had full control of the settlers over here because the Crown helped fund, especially when trade was occurring, um, offered security, the security which was the red coats, to help protect the colonies from the pirates and all of the rest of it from coming in and doing what they were going to do. So the Crown, George the Third, was pushing for taxes of the colonies, saying they wanted to be taxed. They're called stamp. It's the Stamp Act to cover the costs of these redcoats for being there and protecting them. There's already these, these tensions happening with people, these settlers in these colonies. The colonies being like Massachusetts, New England. It's almost like you feel like the attention from the religious conflict and all of this that's happened previously years before with the Salem witch trials is all added to them just getting really pissy. <laughs> And what I mean is the red coats. And another thing too, uniform will do a lot to the mind. I was thinking to myself, if they, these red coats, that they had their own places, they had accommodations in the towns that they were staying in, but they were in these red coats, they were in these uniforms, crown uniforms. Can you imagine just seeing these people around all the time around? You'd be like, ugh, you're just really annoying me. It's just giving me this like energetic vibe. It's like, like fear, isn't it? You're here for this reason, I don't really care for it. If they were just wearing normal clothes and getting amongst it, it wouldn't have that feeling about it and so eventually the people the townspeople the settlers start turning on the red coats it's like we don't want you here and they start pushing them and poking them throwing things at them throwing stones at them and as it says in here it sounds for a while they were very resilient to this to the pushing these people just get away we don't want you here and one day they snapped well somebody called an order to shoot because they're the only ones that have muskets the the rest of the people the settlers don't have weapons right that's why they're throwing stones and so they're pushing in buttons and I guess for a while the British were fighting that but then they did retaliate and end up killing people and I think they killed about 11 people but John Adams who ends up later becoming a president at the time he's a lawyer and he stood with the British saying they weren't going to be persecuted because what they did was called for because they I think they were retaliating against being attacked essentially right even though there's no comparison to stones and guns I think that's what it was I think it was just like to stop for stones at me. Ben Franklin, Benjamin Franklin is going back and forth between America and the UK and he works, he's a postmaster for the king and so he shares communications and he does it, he comes across as really just a very rational, logical person. He questions things, he questions religion, very interesting person. He did so much, he was almost, he was a peacemaker too to a certain point until the king mugged him off and he went back to America and started standing with the American Americans because the UK kind of turned on him for no good reason really. He was just sharing information from what was happening with the colonies and now they're getting really annoyed with the crown controlling them. What I did notice too in this book was how when people act out of fear and they point fingers and accuse and they don't use logic, they don't question things. I really do think that it is a lack of education. I think that you've got people that quote elitist or people in high positions way back in the day that had access to information they had access to books to knowledge and there were people that were more poor or of a lower status that might not have had that in access and I do think that if you don't exercise that part of your brain where you're able to have access to different types of information and start making questions and you know be able to expand your mind in such a way and even traveling you can really feel that in Benjamin Franklin his traveling how it expanded him he was curious he wanted to learn with people back then they didn't seem to have a lot of education and so they were acting on instinct and fear and with very little awareness to be able to question things. You can see that the people that do have that knowledge that do have access to information to books are in high places. I really would like to talk more about this book but I really recommend people read it because it's not hard to read. It is pretty Thin. It's really not that big and it's informative. It's laid out very nicely. Again, there's also there's a whole section on The Exorcist, the film and the book and a lot of things that happened actually during the whole production and a lot of things I never even knew about the real life person that happened to, Ronald his name is, which after the whole thing occurred, he eventually ends up being an engineer for NASA. I've got my own thoughts on that. So exploring space can not just mean outer space, but inner space, consciousness, 
dimensions, how the brain can, the consciousness works with the physical body. So after what this, this bloke went through, this Ronald, this kid, he turns out to be an engineer for NASA. I just find that really actually quite interesting. He went through some crazy demonic ordeal. I mean, I don't want to even get into it. I think you should just read a book. Honestly, I think you should read it. It was nutty. And it makes me think, when you look into the experience of this man, Ronald, it made me think about electromagnetic energy and these things occurring around him. I don't know. I won't get into it because it's actually a little bit, it is deterring off from the premise, really what we're talking about here. So I touched on predominantly what this book is about, which is the Salem Witch Trials, but the following information really does connect in with the Salem Witch Trials and how the future evolves based on this big event that had happened. I really recommend it. I liked it a lot. I'm going to say 4.5 stars. Thank you for being here. This is day four. There's another three days left of this Halloween kind of reading books that have the feeling of this time of year. I think the next one's going to be Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The word for that book is miscreant. Miscreant. Why does that sound weird? Miscreant. Miscreant. Devious villain. Okay. I think it's perfect for the book. These people were just the worst of the worst, what they did back then. Okay. Bye.